okay here's the setup the street is on the other side of that snowbank right so i blocked the i blocked the booster and check this out you see where that thing is and i had to go forward and then back from the blind side in a zigzag kind of way from the road to the right to the left and then here took probably took maybe 15 20 minutes and the guys helped me they they blocked the traffic and so this huge cabalco 95 ton just unloaded my jeep and trust me shackles shackles they use on those uh, lines that are already set up to pick up that piece that i'm loading the shackles are so massive i was joking i told the guy I said hey shackles probably weigh more than the jeep you know and that thing is like a cylinder so they say it should sit right here somewhere and then we're gonna block it i just don't want to overload the trailer because it's even though it's only 105,000 pounds but it's it's only nine feet long so they're gonna be a lot of weight and i gotta load it i don't know probably a bit closer to the truck because on the back i have four axles but over here i have i'll have the jeep and then you know much more axles so i can probably make it make the center somewhere maybe it's just a little bit maybe somewhere here where this board is instead of the light which is my normal center i'll just move it one foot and then we're going to take these boards out and I, i'm going to use this on the sides and I, I just said you know what i don't want all the weight to sit on these because they're not that strong so we'll see but they say oh we'll make it work so they have all kinds of timbers in here and it's funny that i've been at this place before as soon as i was when i stopped at that uh, gas station i recognized this like this looks so familiar except of course that was uh, summer now everything is covered in snow but it looks so familiar and then i remember the name of this company i was here i was here when i worked for uh, uh, premium when i was an owner operator and i was trying to remember what i hold out of here but i remember this crazy this crazy thing you know even though my i think i had like a 55 ton either either a kaufman or fontaine and then you know i think some guys uh, he was saying if you're short you go you drive in and then you go that way and then you go this way when the, this was clean and you back in here and then you turn and then you back he says that's how most guys do it. but i said man i cannot do it i'm too long uh, like i'm surprised i made it because there was a mailbox on one side of course i missed it i don't know and then there was a snow bank on the other there's a gate but i'm telling you like backing from a blind side like this if somebody told me back in uh, 2005 when i failed two backup tests at ministry of transportation couldn't pass back <laughs> if somebody 15 years ago told me that i would be doing this with a 90 foot rig i just smack him in the face so anyway so that uh, that part of a boring machine tunnel boring machine i think it's called gripple shell or something like that and so i'm taking it to toronto for repairs that's where the company is that makes them like this is just one small part of this huge machine it's like 20 loads and so it's going to uh going to toronto area for repairs and then eventually it goes uh, back into us to the buyer like the buyers in the states like i'm i'm in wisconsin right now so this is the seller right these are the guys that sold it but the buyer is in is in the other state in the south and but before he takes possession he wants it fixed he wants it refurbished and that's what we're doing you know i'm always curious like why people move things right because it costs so much money so in this case it's repair Re refurbishment overhaul and then when it's new and shiny and have nice shiny paint it goes to the new owner all the tw 20 truckloads go to the new owner in the southern u.s yeah you see and they have trail kings over here so they have their own trailers 
Yeah, I remember. Last time I was here, I was looking at these. And I still remember the trick because it's very tight to go this way because that's where I have to go. And I asked him, I said, I think I, I remember there was a loop. And he says, yeah, instead of going this way towards the main road, you loop around and there's a road that curls around and then goes back to this road. But this way, out of the gate, I have to turn right in a very, in a more gentle way than instead of like 180 degrees, you know. So anyway, very cold. It's minus 12 Celsius with the wind. Don't ask me how. I think it's, I don't know, one or two F, but very cold. Anyway, so the plan now is they're gonna raise it, and then they're gonna walk back with the load and then I have to back under it because they said they won't be able to bring it all the way here so they can only go in a straight line just a little bit so they're gonna back make room for me to back under it and so my rear axles are still blocked so this way I'm just gonna go this way to the left and then try not to hit my own Jeep and then just move the end of the trailer this way right and then we'll have to figure out how to load it. But yeah, I made some good timing, even though I got stuck yesterday, but I, oh, yesterday I did a cool thing. I, uh, I managed to uh, service, did a full service on the Jeep. So they did full DOT inspection. You see now I have a new uh, shiny sticker, valid for one year until next February. And the guy checked all the lights and I asked him to uh, check tires because this thing was sitting for three months, right? And he said all tires were like 110 psi, and you have they have to be at uh, they have to be at uh, 125. So he made a 125, but I didn't check the truck. Oh, and also he uh, he fixed my flashing lights. Turns out there was a, there was a, a broken wire right where that box is, like that little accumulator of the battery. Accumulator. That's Russian accumulator. Like where the battery is which I, I wanted to disconnect but this guy says hey you have a broken wire in here and as soon as he fixed that wire the light came on charging because before it wouldn't charge right now it's charging and all the lights are working beautiful and turns out for that battery to charge all you need you don't even need lights your key must be on basically each time you're driving even without the lights the clearance lights that battery should be charging so I don't know how did the the, the wire broke you know it almost to me it feels like almost somebody did it you know intentionally I don't know because it was hidden inside inside a cable and he pulled it and he said hey you have a cut wire in here I don't know what's going on anyway so he they're lifting it now so let me just focus because this is a serious business you know no time for fooling around or joking and I cannot record because once they load i'm gonna drop the trailer so i'll be running around like a headless chicken but this is kind of like a intro for you guys and then once it's loaded i'll show you how it sits and how it's secured and if i still have some juice i'll show you some some stunt driving like getting out of here because yeah i do have another camera so this is uh this is session five and we're gonna use uh, a much better quality wise uh, I mean image quality wise uh, hero 8 okay real quickly guys I'm all done just about to leave I just need to print out my my Wisconsin permit yeah this is quite a monster very concentrated weight and so I hooked up the Jeep you know all the hoses I didn't have any problems except of course I had to drag the huge that huge hose that was connected here to the neck I had to drag it to the over there and hook it up on top of that bar but the hydraulics uh, worked everything worked the airbags except that this one see these chains over here sometimes one is a bit shorter because when we lift it right I always block this with a chain like this so that uh, the airbags don't overextend right and so that one unlocked when we drop it on the ground that chain unlocked this one was locked so i had to put a small board under the tire drain the air just drive forward a little bit just put it in the front 
and then I was able to undo this chain and, and on this Jeep these chains are only on one side normally they're on both sides but for some reason JC trailer decided to save money so they only gave me chains on one side and yeah this is what it is we tried different methods and we ended up with this I don't know if it falls off it falls off uh, it was a bit challenging there's like two eyes here but this one is very narrow you know that one, that one is okay but this one is super small there's nothing you can do and then over there I had to climb over there all those cables put my uh, shackle in there and then one more is here like you see it has these holes right and so so one pair is 20 20 000 pounds right 20 40 60 60 80 100 120 and here here yeah it was the i asked the guy you know like i always say ask the shipper they know the machine usually and i and the guys i said can i hook up to this he says no because this rotates he says try that one he says that's part of the frame and actually it has like a tie down you see like a like kind of like what you uh use for hooking up the anchor i mean the cables and the you know with the boat you know and but then that's it so in the back i only had two tie downs two pairs that's not enough and so i remember there's nothing i can do here no no eyes nothing you know unless i want to hook up to that aluminum handle that will fall off in in two miles and all this rotates you cannot hook up to this and the guy says well maybe you can just do a hook like this but what's stopping it from moving it'll just keep keep moving you know and for this for the chain to pull this way i'll have to do it something different something similar on that end i didn't want to do it like i had a plenty of chains in the front and so what i did i i went in i borrowed the super tall ladder because that's what they used they use those uh, there's two eyes on this side two eyes on the on the other side on the top so they use those four eyes to lift the machine and i knew that the hook will not go through and i didn't want to un undo the the hooks because i figured wait a second i can do it like this so i just i i just did a loop right so chain is under pressure it cannot go up it can only pull down unless this thing rotates which it can't because this similar setup on the other side and one quick scare one quick scare i got scared there for a second i i was looking at this piece and it's it's curved and i'm like what the heck did we break the trailer But yeah, it's a lot of weight, you know, and this trailer is rated for 120,012 feet. Now here, here you have 105,000 pounds. I don't know. So it's sitting like this. What? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, not too bad. It should work. So yeah, this was challenging. So this part was super challenging, climbing up there with the chain, and then this part was challenging because it's all greasy in here there's nowhere to step but i managed i like climbing but then one real scare was you know i drained the air right of course before loading i drained the air on the trail on the truck and i used this master master thing in here so that kills all the air and then i disconnected i i uh, killed the air in the booster and then when I reinflated, this thing was like this, sitting like this. And this, I tried to, you know, I tried to increase the, the height of that, of that uh, bar over there. So now I'm position eight. And usually when you try to increase it right away, you can hear a hissing sound, you know, like the pumping air, nothing, no air. And this thing was sitting like this in the sky. This axle was here. And the chain was super tight airbags were like two feet tall you know like what the heck is going on you know and then i was about to call my mom in russia and, and, and start crying because this is i thought again maybe i don't have enough maybe i don't have enough shims you know i thought i was okay i'll, I'll call my buddy who knows about shims 
maybe I, I need to add more shims but that would be a real nightmare because so much weight you know to add shims you need to create a gap in here so this has to be high which is not possible with the load by the way this is where the the wire was broken uh, that's why flashing lights worked and not worked periodically so and then uh, this guy Tony the shipper came came over he says you need a torch or something I said I don't know something is going on here everything worked and he says oh you probably have ice in the line and so I just undid this line I did this line and there was air in there and then I just dropped the air reinflated and it started working so so basically there was a small piece of ice somewhere blocking the airline because it's pretty cold in the morning it was minus 11 celsius minus 12 and i think it's a bit heavy on one side i don't know maybe it's the ground but the trailer seems uh seems a bit uh oh i still need to put flags on the trailer seems a bit sitting at an angle yeah i see this this is a bit higher than that but that's how the cookie crumbled you know <laughs> that's how the crane loaded it when it loaded that's how it sat like what are we supposed to do so basically it's slightly that way oh i might need that so it's slightly that way which is okay because i'll be most of the time i'm in the curb lane right and the curb lane you're tilted to the right so we should be good yeah, so I just need to hook up four flags and then print out my 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 permits, and that's it. I'm super tired. It's already four o'clock local time. I'll just go to a truck stop. There's a big uh, Petro Petro in uh, Racine. Maybe have some uh, some nice dinner if if the restaurant is open. And it helped that you know I have these nice pants, and I have a bunch of sweaters, and because it's it's really cold. And I, I put two socks on, you know, very challenging uh, conditions. So now the first, uh, I, and I don't want to go far, I just want to see how this thing behaves. You know, just drive slowly to the truck stop, park there, uh, recheck all my chains and then uh, restart in the morning. Uh, because I cannot go through Michigan anyway, even though actually it's less than 10 feet, but now my permits are issued permits say, say I'm pretty sure uh, no weekend driving but it's less than 11 they told me 10 10 wide I highly doubt that all right and then we'll, I'll show you briefly some some driving because of course first challenge is getting out of here going that way so that would be that would be interesting so I just need to get to the truck stop which is 57 kilometers 30 miles away because now it's 4.13, sunset is at 5.10 and of course I cannot drive I cannot drive after dark Hold on. well, I'm not sure how we're gonna get out of here but we'll see so first I have to go a bit wide to avoid hitting this.
Yeah, I did not go far. <laughs> Son of a gun, but I could not see it. You know, it's covered by snow. Uh, just like that side over there, you know, there's snow. And I saw there was a uh, trace of a tire. And of course, I'm looking over there. That's what I was concerned with. Like I was, I'm like one foot away. I'm looking in the mirror. I'm one foot away from the gate. You know, if I hit that gate, I'm gonna bend it, broke it, everything. And plus, it, it can uh, kill the lights on my trailer, right? And so then all of a sudden, the truck goes. Boom. So the right tire is in the ditch. Right away, some guy showed up, and he's from the same company because they have two two buildings here. And he says he's one of the owners. So he called uh, the guy Tony. So he's probably gonna start screaming at me. But I said, you know, there's no other way. Like, how do I get out? Like, remember I said it would be a challenge getting out. I just didn't expect this. All right, they pulled me out with a with a big loader. Yeah, I, I, I bent the plate, I just pulled it out, so no big deal. Yeah, you see, you know, with now the loader is cleaning the snow. Because, yeah, you cannot see, you know, it's like this. Under the snow, it looks okay. And then you go there and it's screwed. All right, how's my lights? Are my lights flashing? Oh. Five, four, three. So now the challenge is to get to the truck stop before dark. But before that, there's a turn, right? And the guy says, yeah, you'll have to go wide. I said, I don't want to get stuck again, you know? But yeah, there's, that's why we're doing this loop. So accidents can happen. You see the turn? That's what that's what worries me. It's it's not like a gentle. Oh, check this out. We are spinning. Okay, we're gonna lift the we're gonna lift the lift axle. Please, please, please don't get me stuck here because I really don't want to spend the night in here. Because these guys, you know, they have all kinds of machines. Uh, they have big rock tracks, they have loaders, so it's not a problem. You see, as soon as I called, well, actually, I didn't even, I didn't even have to call. I was, I was just about to call when a gentleman in a nice uh, Lincoln SUV showed up and he says, you stuck? I said, yes, sir. He said, anybody inside? I said, no, I went inside. It's open, but I couldn't find anybody. Alright, this is it. That's the turn, I think. That's the turn. Yeah, you see straight ahead, the sign says dead end. So we're just gonna go super wide. Same thing in here, the same snow.
no at least there's somebody you can call right because I, I'm just doing a big loop because I, I would never have made I, I would never have made that left turn and now I don't care about darkness I'm not stopping until I reach that uh, truck stop uh, 33 miles away and I'm not putting down my pusher because actually I see that I have very little weight which is kind of interesting because we moved this remember I was talking about I was talking about the center and how I uh, because I have five axles here so I moved uh, the center like this towards the truck like the center of mass of the machine and still I see like I don't know 30 30,000 on the on on the truck tandem I see and that's why you know now I understand this I remember when I was uh, just you know learning all this heavy haul just you know online and stuff like that everybody was saying that the lift axle is useless is useless shit we have two more turns so the lift axle is useless when you have uh, a tandem um, tandem uh, Jeep because the Jeep just takes too much weight and if you put your lift axle down all that does is just you see I was sliding I, I saw right away in the indicator on the dash saying that you know my, my wheels are spinning because the pusher of course is not driving right so the pusher is just a, a, an axle and so when you put the pusher down it uh, takes the weight from the drives and so you start spinning okay so wait a second which way are we going I think you see we're turning left Jesus I am long which way am I turning where's the left turn oh check this out that should be part that that looks like a part of this machine you see this guy yeah I think what he loaded at a different different oh it's the same company like the sign the sign the sign is okay so now we're turning right okay and then they're gonna be a 90 degree left turn So this is the road, Bobolink. afraid the rear I was afraid the rear wheels would go in the ditch again in the snow well here we can here we can deal with this this is three lanes we just take all the lanes as much lanes as we want put the pusher down
the most difficult part. So now I just need to get to this uh, Silver Spring Drive. We're turning left, we have a bunch of space in here. Now we're talking. Now we're cooking with gas. Boy, got stuck right at the gate. You know, that's kind of like embarrassing, you know. <laughs> They're probably thinking, wait a second, so who did we hire to move this? Is this guy. Still spinning. Well, but I'm in the middle of the intersection. Come on. Slowing down just to look. Made it, killed it. Before I jump on the freeway, I want to stop and uh, double check the chains because you know I went through some. I went in the ditch, then now I'm going through this, right? I want to make sure all the chains are tight. Son of a. This road is really screwed up. lanes because I'm turning right oh yeah so it's it's 41 actually okay is it narrow uh, I think it 
it should be okay. Because I got a, I have a yield sign. And plus, I want to stop and check, check the chains. Well, at least see, at least here I see that it's, it's all, it's uh, pavement over there. emergency because the last thing we want is for this thing to roll out oh man well at least I made it to the ramp with the freeway <laughs> Maybe tomorrow, if I'm in a good mood. I'll go through the scale. I'm just curious how heavy this thing is. Perfect timing. They said in Milwaukee there's a curfew until five o'clock, but I wasn't sure. Like Milwaukee is way north and east. But I need to scale because it's very important to know is it less than 100,000 or is it more than 100,000? If it's 
If it's less than 100,000, I don't need a permit in Ontario. I can just use my... I can use my uh, annual permit. Because it allows me with this setup I can do 78,000 kgs gross. bridge 15 15 feet one inch <laughs> I can probably get under that look one two three four five five signs jeez what kind of trucks are traveling here if they have to warn them about 15 one bridge All right, so what are we doing? Uh, we're going three kilometers. And then we're jumping on 41, which is, it is 41. Well, I guess everybody now knows that I'm slow. I can turn it off. soon and inside there's a bunch of cables and I said guys is this gonna stay like did you tie it down yeah it's all good I don't know but yeah it feels heavy actually like the my axle weights are low but the truck doesn't want to pull. Oh wow, look at this, because I have, I have fuel restriction. Probably some water in the fuel. I might need to change the, my fuel filter. You see, actually this time I tried to use the 10 micron fuel filter, like the one a guy from Cummins told me, oh no, don't use 25 micron, use 10. And so first time I used 25 and it was fine. But now I, I tried 10 and right away I see like, I don't know, after 7,000 kilometers, 4,000 miles, I already have you know pretty high restriction. an interesting day and naively I was naive I thought you know what shall I do where shall I go today how far shall I go after I load and I thought you know one one school of thought says leave the state right so if you load in Wisconsin the, the plan for the first day after loading is leave Wisconsin but then I thought, wait a second. I was in Porter, Indiana, and it's only 150 miles away. Uh, surely I can make it to Porter, Indiana by sundown. <laughs> no, it doesn't work like that. I'm telling you, just as long as you get as long as you get out of this if you get out of the state where you load it you're doing good I'm not gonna even manage that today and that guy in the blue truck is behind me it's a Western star but his load is much lighter he doesn't have a Jeep he doesn't have a booster so yeah I really 
scaling it. I want to scale this. So if it's less than 100, what happens is that I save money in Ontario, about 350 bucks Canadian. Because that's the usual cost of a single trip permit. If it's more than 105, I'm gonna have a talk with the broker. Because you know the rate depends on the on the weight, and and plus if it's really a, a big difference, I might need to uh, reorder my permits, and that's extra cost. Yeah, see, it's 5:05 now, so it's it's getting dark at they said 5:30, no 5:12 or something. But anyway. I'm not stopping until I reach the truck stop. I don't care. So we have 48 kilometers. And what is that? 25 miles to go. And the guy is driving. Did you see that? The guy is driving. The rear door is open on the straight truck yeah for some reason I cannot pick up speed like I'm in seven high and I'm doing 45 miles an hour that's because the, there's hills here yeah, and I don't want to go fast because I see guys it's like a stop-and-go traffic ahead Chicago, okay.
tomorrow also I'm gonna change the filter because yeah he's getting at uh, now the restriction shows four that's too much that's one of the reasons the truck doesn't want to pick up speed because right now my foot is on the floor and all I can do is 75 kilometers an hour kilometers 25 miles Saturday I'm allowed to drive in Wisconsin and Illinois and Illinois um, my permit broker asked me she said uh, you want to go on the tollway and I said yeah so I'd rather pay the toll but I'll go it's much faster I just go 94 294 80 to Indiana so over the weekend I can go as far as Michigan border so I'll just probably go to that porter uh, that big TA there I like the, the lots of space you can pull in I like that truck stop exit 22b I think So yeah, for now we're just shutting down in Racine, Wisconsin, and then tomorrow I'm gonna try to scale, uh, change my fuel filter, and start tracking towards Porta, Indiana.
unbelievable. Very rough. turn to the right and then to the left so actually yeah the truck stop is right there somewhere This is wide, I like this. This is good. Turn west where? Here? I think it's over here. Unless I'm mistaken. No, it's here. 